Yeah. So first of all, you shouldn't vote. Uh, <laughs> there's no chance that you can make a difference in any election. Um, so there's basically your return as a voter is guaranteed zero. Uh, if you, it, the, the only reason you should vote is if you know your vote would make a difference in the outcome of the election, and, it's, and that will, will not be the case. It won't be, it'll be extremely unlikely that your vote alone would make a difference in the election. So, so, you, so you shouldn't vote. Um, what I find interesting is, the, you know, the primary argument against playing the lottery, you know, that y your expected return is less than what you know you're going to pay for. You know, that it, there's, an ex there's base, virtually a 0% chance you're going to win the lottery, but you know that you're going to pay the 6 bucks, or whatever. So you have, you should not play the lottery. Y your expected return is very clear. It's negative. So, so don't do it. The same could be said about voting. It's going to take time. It's going to interrupt your life. And the re return is you're not going to make a difference in the election, so you shouldn't vote. Uh, um, I, think that's, I think that's really solid. That's, I think that's a really solid case. Uh, but I know what, 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 what the, the, it, the interesting things keep piling up because uh, people, don't, pe people don't buy that. I mean, anyone I've ever told that to has been very resistant. Like, of course you should vote. But no one says, of course you should play the lottery. <laughs> It, it's a lot easier to explain to people that they shouldn't play the lottery than it is to explain to them that why they shouldn't vote, even though it seems like it's the same, it's the same structure, it's the same reason why you shouldn't do one or the other. So I don't. What's up with that? Is it uh? Anyway, yeah. Um, presidential elections coming up. <laughs> it's so it's it, it's so dumb to care. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, the presidential election is coming up uh, November. It's, it's only it's only ten months away. I, uh, <laughs> but, so, um, you know, I'm not going to vote, but I don't know. I, how would you even determine who should be president? I'm so I'm so clueless. Let's say so. I know you just I I, I just said don't vote, but let's say some magic happened and you could pick the next president. Um, what on what basis do you pick the next president? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think um, what's really easy to say is um, based off policy. Now, I don't really like that answer, but I know it's like a lot of easy answers. That one's easy to give. Uh, it, it, I, don't, I don't like that. Well, at least in, in the constitutional framework of this country, uh, the, the president's not a legislative um, office. So, I mean, they have some they have veto power, but they're not, a, they're not a part of the legislature. They don't vote. They're... It's, it, they're, they're supposed to enforce the law. They're not supposed to make the law. Anyway. So if, you, if you, you're picking the president for their policy positions, but they're not really supposed to be a policy role. So it's kind of an abuse of what they're supposed to be. Now, I know that's, just, that, that's at least in the, 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 the structure of our government. The, and I should, have to, I should accept that the reality is that they are really influential on legislation. For better or worse, that's just the truth. So... Maybe 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 you should choose a president by policy, but I don't like I don't like abusing the, the, the constitution like that. Again, I, maybe I need to get over it, but uh, it's not it's not really um, at the very least at the very least it's not a legislative position. So there are other you know qualifications a president's going to need besides just having good policy. They ha they're going to have to like manage a cabinet. They're going to have to manage people. They're going to have to be inspiring to their um, sub subordinates. That, that's another skill that they need. Uh, but also, since they're enforcing the law, they need to be honest with with themselves about the law. They need to be faithful to the law. So those are other skills. I, and by the way, I have no idea how to identify these skills. That's what's so frustrating about you know thinking about thinking seriously about politics. Like, well, so I've got my, the criteria alone are really hard to discover what they should be. But once you have them discovered, you're clueless as, as to how to you know identify them in a person. I don't know who has these these, these qualities. How how could how could anyone vote? I sh I shouldn't vote, right? I have no idea. But everyone votes. Like, no one no no one's thinking about it like this, and they they vote anyway. So um, anyway, back to the the the, the question is, um, should it be based off policy? Let, let's let's assume for a second that it should be based off policy, right? Um, uh, you know, Donald Trump is has he has like a menu of policies that he's going to implement, and you should go for the for the, for the you should vote for the the candidate who who has the best policy menu. Um, 
how do you even know what their policy menu is? I haven't, how, how, do you, how do you know? How do you identify that? Because um, right, a lot of people think politicians are dishonest. They just don't think they're telling the truth. So if, they, if the politician says, I have policy B, why would you think that they have policy B? Right, you've, you're, you're still at, at point zero as to as, as how do you determine what their policy are. You, 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 you've, you've made no progress. Um, and I, I, I think it's really cynical. I mean, it, it's really easy... It's really easy. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of really easy things to believe. One of them is a, a very cynical belief about politicians, which is that they're just lying. They're, they're knowingly telling you falsehoods about their own policy choices um, just to get your, your vote. Um, but you don't even have to take a cynical approach to doubt their, their statements about policy. I mean, first, first of all, their ability to make policy is dependent on their opportunity to do so, and they might not get the opportunity, right? Because they, they have to deal with um, the world. They have to deal with other... They have to deal with the legislature. They have to make... Um, they have to make compromises, or uh, they might just not get the opportunity. So then they can't satisfy their promise to implement a policy. Also, they might just not know what's going to happen. I mean, I would hope that we have very um, uh, skilled, um, experienced uh, politicians in offices like the presidency. But maybe they'll learn something. Maybe they'll you, once they're in the office, they they're they're free to change their mind, and they they're going to have that unique experience of being the president. Maybe they'll have a good reason change their mind um, I w- it, but there's other considerations one uh, you, you know I really like the law um, and um, presidents have to pres- presidents have to care about the law I mean they're they're enforcing the law but they also have to you know um, they also have to have legal opinions about what the law that they're enforcing is uh, we have uh, we live in a uh, uh, for those, for those of us who live in the United States, we live in a country, that country being the United States, we live in a country that has a, a legal culture that we call uh, rule of law. Um, and that's, uh, that, that means that we have laws and, and we are, officials are sort of instruments of the law, right? Uh, public officials in the United States of America have to recognize the law and then act based off what the law says. And so we, what we do is we are counting on officials to be sort of um, I keep using the word faithful, and it's really, it, it really works. They have to examine the law for what it says independently of what they would like to actually enforce or what they would uh, like to interpret from it. We're counting on all of our officials to do this. Um, it, 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 I think it's a great aspect of our country. It's, to put it in contrast, the, 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 the other term that I have in my head that I'm going to talk about is uh, rule by law. So uh, rule by law means that you, you really you have um, to be derogatory. You have a tyrant, and he uses the laws as an instrument to do whatever he wants. So, I think like China is a great example of a rule by law country. They have laws, but really they just have uh, public officials who are trying to do things, and they use the law to do what they want. So they're not really subjects of the law; they're more like superiors of the law. Um, not all, <laughs> not all rule by law countries are evil. Uh, I mean. Uh, like I, I think France is a great uh, is a great example of a rule by law country. They're they're, um, they're, not, they're not afraid to just um, you know make a whole new constitution if it gets in their way. Um, anyway, that's that's a different point. But anyway, uh, w- because we're a rule of law country, the president has to sort of, the president has to interpret the law. So that that's like a, a skill you have to have in, in to be a U.S. official is you have to be able to interpret the law. But it's weird because if you said okay. W- Who's a person that interprets the law? Well, it's it's a lawyer or it's a judge, um, who does that by profession. That's their that's their primary task is interpreting the law. Um, so then we have to admit that there is a skill overlap between judges and the U.S. president. That so they both have to interpret the law. The president not so much, but he's, it still helps when he could do that. Um, so we that means we if you if you want to get. Because of our legal culture, we should elect presidents that can interpret the law and are, and um, are, are they they act they recognize themselves as subservient to the U.S. Constitution, right? They make that oath that they're, they're going to protect the U.S. Constitution. But it, it's weird because the president's the job of the president, or at least the the stereotype of the president, is sort of exactly not that, right? He's but he's supposed to enforce the law, right? The president was a, a king, at least in conception, right? A, a king's an authority. He, the king is an authority. It's not. 
not the Constitution. I mean, I mean at least if, if they're both authorities, they have to they're, they're rivalrous in some sense. Uh, but it's just it's just weird how much res like law interpreting responsibility we put on a U.S. president. Other countries don't do this. But it's it, it's weird because if 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 it's important that that U.S. officials be constrained by the law, right? They have to they're subservient to the law. They're 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 constrained to only what the law says. Then how do we keep presidents constrained? I mean, how do what, what's the mechanism that keeps them committed to the law? You could think we well we just we're just going to elect the good ones. We're going to elect the the ones that um, are committed to the law. Well, then you're counting on people's judgment. And how many people actually really think about this? They, they don't. Anyway, so if we if we if we're counting on presidents to constrain themselves or have a sense of constraint on themselves, then they haven't. The U.S. judiciary also has that responsibility of constraining the presidency. So, here, here's an ideal. So the president's gonna the president's a king and he enforces the law and he kind of does whatever he wants in that respect. He has autonomy in his job of enforcing the law. We always run the risk of electing a tyrant. Uh, or someone like Hitler. What would be great is if the if the judiciary was completely functional and it prevented tyrants from going out of control. Um, so if let, let, let's hypothetically let's say that a judiciary could constrain the presidency, but just by their words alone, that's not true. But let's assume it for a second. Then it wouldn't matter how much of a tyrant the president was, right? But if we have a functioning judiciary, to what extent does that matter that he's a tyrant? If the judiciary could constrain tyrants, they could identify, you know, they, if, they, if, it, if a tyrant is someone who violates people's rights, and they could identify rights and when they're violated, and they, were, they, they, they wanted to do that, they stopped the president from violating rights, that doesn't matter if he's a tyrant. It doesn't matter at all. Um, so that if it doesn't matter, then the criticisms of a candidate for being a tyrant are empty. And I don't, I don't know what to think about that. Okay, so I, I made one assumption, which is that the judiciary can actually constrain the presidency, and that's that's not true in the sense that the judiciary doesn't command anyone, right? Like the the president actually commands an army, He's, he, but the, the the judiciary doesn't command anyone. They're not they're not like an operation. They, they're not a fighting force. If the if the if if a court makes a ruling and it becomes publicly known and they, they hand it to the president they said the court said you can't do this anymore the president can just do it anyway and that's actually happened a few times in US history so it, I guess we can reformulate this this quality of a president that we'd like to see to be we, it would be good if the US president cared about what court said if, if the US president complied with the orders of the court Okay, now that that's said, how can you identify if a political, or if, if a candidate for the U.S. presidency is going to comply with, with the court? I, I, I have no idea. Okay, third point. So, how do you identify if a candidate is going to comply with the, with the U.S. judiciary? Um, the easy answer, okay, so there's, there's two candidates right now. Um, there are many candidates, but there, there there are two that I'm thinking of right now. The two that I'm thinking of in my head, <laughs> uh, you know, like I, um, one of them is is Ted Cruz, and Ted Cruz uh, was a lawyer, um, and he, he was uh, offered the position uh, uh, to to join um, a U.S. Court of Appeals, and and he turned it down because he wanted to he wanted to be a legislature, um, he wanted to be in the legislature, uh, so. Right, right away, those, those those facts sort of ring that he cares about the law, and I've actually read a lot of comments from all the candidates about um, what they think about um, the Supreme Court, um, uh, Supreme Court rulings, and making um, future uh, Supreme Court uh, appointments. And Ted Cruz's statements, uh, my opinion, were uh, very respectable. I, he he said that he he. I mean, he pointed out that he disagrees with the Supreme Court on certain rulings, but he said that it's still the law, and you, you have to respect the law. Um, so that that's what I, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> but you know, again, like he said that, but then what am, what am I supposed to believe? Because I know he has the reasons he says the things he says is not because um, they're true. Not to say that they're false. They, 
you, you, you can say something that's true not because it's true. He, he, he's saying them because he's a candidate for the U.S. presidency, so his motivations are totally different from revealing, you know, the inner facts about what he thinks and feels. I just don't, I don't, I just had no idea what to think of that. Um, by the way, uh, you know, tangent, I, uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders made a comment about, um, his, uh, the Supreme Court, uh, appointments and his, his thoughts on Supreme Court rulings. He said that he would appoint a candidate that was, uh, he would, he, he would only appoint a candidate if they said that they would overturn Citizens United. I don't know, I haven't actually read Citizens United, I don't know anything about that. Uh, but I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Uh, well, you shouldn't. I mean, you should. You, you shouldn't appoint judges or justices because they will give you the political. Um, they will give you rulings that are aligned with your 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 political beliefs. Um, right? Law isn't politics. You you need you want you should have good lawyers who interpret the law honestly, and not not people who satisfy your own. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not gonna substantiate that. I'm just gonna go with that. Uh, it was. A, it, was a, it was a tangent. So tangent. Tangent complete. But um, anyway, uh, Ted Cruz is, is is competing with with Donald Trump for the Republican nomination, and um, Donald Trump hasn't said um, such respectful comments about um, Supreme Court appointments. Uh, not to say that he's devious or, or, or um, you, you know, has poor judgment about SCOTUS appointments. It's just, I have no idea. Because I, I keep thinking, like, well, he's, why is he saying the things he's saying? He's saying it because he's talking to, he's trying to win an election, which means he's talking to um, just people. He's showing up on TV right, right next to, you know, entertainment. And so, the, it, you know, it's funny when people talk about honesty when they when they say oh so, so and so is honest or dishonest such as a politician it, it, it's really funny when they say that because it, no one really examines conditions for honesty right like if honesty is saying let, let's look at a really really like oversimplified notion of honesty which is just saying the truth right it's not really about saying the truth but just saying the truth well what if there's no opportunity for the truth right uh, I mean Right, is that conceivable? I don't know. Now that I've said that, I don't know if that makes, makes any sense. I mean, what if... What if there was a true... A statement I could say that that was true, that I understood to be true, but I knew that the listener could not understand the content of it, regardless as to whether or not it's true. Do I have a capacity for honesty in that situation? It could not be understood, but there is a sentence I could say that is true. Do I have a capacity to be understood? I mean, do I have a capacity to be um, honest? I could not... Right, I'll say it again. I, I'm talking to someone, there's a sentence I want to say that's true, but it could not be understood. I mean, I, have, I, I know exactly how my listener will understand it, and they will not understand it. However, that will be the true one. Do I say a false one? Do I say a false one that they could understand that is close to the true one? If I say a false one that's close to the true one, how is it close? I don't how I how, what what would me, what would make a false statement close to the true one? I don't know what that means. I I, I have no idea. Um, there's a phrase I really like uh, called lying to children. Uh, lying to children is when you explain something in 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 terms that are wrong that are false, but it the the wrong terms the the the, the wrong understanding the components of of a wrong understanding put together make a correct understanding fall into place, and as soon as it falls in place. The listener understands exactly how it was false. What they were being taught was false. Anyway, so back to the election stuff is, uh, I, I noticed this about how Donald Trump talks. He, like the one thing he says is when um, he, when he when he gets asked about um, how he's going to deal with such and such problem or such and such country, he always just talks about like really simple terms like making deals and uh, you know like strong arming people. Right? That, that's that's stupid. <laughs> it, it, it's it's stupid because he, he's. He's a real businessman. I mean, I don't think you, you you might not like him. You might think he he he's an idiot, um, but you you would have to be wrong regarding the idiot part because you can't be an idiot and own a company. <laughs> not, at, not at the same time. I mean, um, he you can't be um, a TV star and stupid at the same time, right? To be to be stupid is to lack mental capacity, and to be on TV entertaining everyone you know continuously for your whole life 
is to demonstrate mental capacity. I mean, he has social skills. You have to give him that. Um, so he's not he's not an idiot. Um, he has some capacity as a businessman. He, he at least has experience as a businessman. You have to that, that you have to admit that. And so when you when, when you see like okay, this guy has a lot of experience as a businessman. That means he has a lot of knowledge as a businessman. He has he knows business things. You know that he has business skills. Um, he has a lot of it more than anyone else, right? Virtually virtually everyone else has inferior business experience and knowledge than he has. So let's go back to lying about children, right? You're you're teaching people. You're you're, tra- you're talking to people who don't understand things, they can't understand what, what, what you know, and you can't teach them. So you, you talk to them in stupid terms, in, in terms that are wrong but understandable, such as making deals and strong-arming people. And, and I, I see that, in, and do, I, do you call that dishonest? Because if he's going to deal with a political problem, he's not going to just make deals and strong-arm people. That, that doesn't make any sense. There's no content behind those words. But they're you know they're digestible. Yeah, uh, you, you someone an average American can hear those and be like, oh yeah, I know what that is. But they don't know what that is that because it's nothing to know. But it's it's still like a it, it's a lying to children version of real business knowledge. Because anyone who's really in business understands what they're doing in terms differently than than making deals and strong arming. They have complex they have complicated esoteric knowledge. Um. So can you discredit Donald Trump for talking like that? I, I don't know. Um, there's, another, there's another one, uh, I mean, there's, another, there's a very common car- criticism of, of Donald Trump, which is that he, um, he's, he's putting on an act, right? We, so we've already talked about putting on an act. He's putting on an act, but then they'll take part of his act, they'll take a statement he said as part of what they've already admitted as an act and criticize it. It's like, well, wait a minute. If you don't think he's sincerely holding the belief, can you still criticize him for making the statement about his belief? Right, like, I, I place, is if you know, if you know he's not being sincere, is it really, I mean, right, sarcasm isn't dishonesty because you know if it's true or false. If someone makes a sarcastic comment, you know if it's true or false. So it's not effectively misleading. It actually, it actually leads. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't hurt the trust of the person who heard sarcasm if they can understand that as sarcasm. So the point is, the tr- the, 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 whether or not the sarcastic remark is literally true or false isn't relevant in, in sarcasm. So if Donald Trump is putting on an act, right, he's being a character, and you know that the character is saying things that are not, that the, the, the actor Donald Trump knows that what the character Donald Trump is saying is not, you, you know, factual or it's not, it's not true, can you still hold it against him for saying that thing? Uh, I mean, he has lots of good reasons to say what he does. I mean, um, right? I mean, because he's he's trying to win an election and because he's trying to care to cater people, he has he has lots of reasons to say things that are not um, that are not either. I don't see. I, I can't say not true because there's no there's no capacity for truth. Uh, but what, what I'm trying to say is, it, it's sort of there's something very incoherent about about the, the, the criticism of the comment and the criticism about his sincerity about the comment at the same time. Meaning that if, if, I'm, if I'm making both of those criticisms at the same time, I'm essentially saying he doesn't believe in A, also he, he said A, and A is a bad policy. It was like, well, okay, if you didn't think he believed in A, then you can't think he's going to implement A, so it doesn't make any sense to criticize him for A to begin with. Because you're not, you, you're not actually expecting A to become about you. Know. So... You, you couldn't hold it against Donald Trump for advocating A if you didn't like A because Donald Trump isn't causal on A. Right? I don't... Did you get it? <laughs> um, yeah. 